My name's Dale Little, and uh, a lot of you know me. Uh, that's what the video's for. Um, a lot of people don't know me, of course. More people don't know me than know me. How about that? Um, a lot of people think they know me. <clears throat> and so I just kind of want to set the record straight of uh, just who I am. Um, <clears throat> people know me as what they've seen, uh, maybe on the outside or the last couple of years or something, a few days, whatever. Um, now, uh, I've got a couple of songs here I'm going to start out with that kind of uh, shows the difference. Uh, where I have been, where I once was, where I am now, and um, then I'll go from there. But the Bible talks about... Um, human heart is deceitfully wicked. The good news is he said he'd give us a new heart. Well, since my baby left me, I found a new place to dwell. Down at the end of lonely street at the heartbreak of death. always crowded you still can find some room for broken hearted lovers to cry well the bell hops for your tears keep flowing and the desk clerk's dressed in black well, they've been so long on Lonely Street, they never look back. They be so lonely, baby. I get so lonely. I get so lonely. I hey, now if your baby leaves you, you gotta tell the tale. Just take a walk down Lonely Street to Heartbreak Hotel. Well, now you know why I don't do Elvis impressions, at least. Um, but uh, that's where I used to be. The kind of world I used to live in. Here's the kind of world I live in now. Same earth, same world there, really. Different place, different life. Well, it's not a mansion in a big iron gate. It's not in Memphis on a road in the state. Living in style, and I think I'll stay. Moved out the day I got saved. And I'm living in Graceland each day of my life. No more worries, no more strife. I think I'll stay. I'm not driving a pink Cadillac. And I'm not performing a lost space act. I'm headed for heaven and I'm living well. Moved out of Park Ridge Hotel. And I'm living in Graceland each day of my Well, I could put on a suit and tie, uh, come in and do this, but uh, I just came in from mowing the yard. Not trying to, to make an impression, just uh, let people know that I'm can be at home in either way. Uh, you can look me up somewhere. If I may find my picture 
uh, way back on Facebook somewhere, or maybe a suit and tie with uh, some uh, people when I was with uh, Prison Fellowship Ministries, uh, people that had, um, had some power, uh, power in this world. They had political power, um, people of means. Uh, but uh, most of my life, I've been right at home just doing the ordinary things. I've worked, um, and that's where people will have misgivings about me, I think. Um, I think I was, I, I just put it plainly, you know, it's almost, uh, I feel like some people think I was born yesterday. Of course, you always got people to try to take advantage of you that way. I'm uh, aware of that. But this is, uh, don't really talk about these things a whole lot. But uh, I've done the heavy construction work for many years. I've been up on the tall buildings. I've climbed up those tower cranes that uh, are several stories high. I've climbed up them and put them together and climbed out on the end and waited for the crane operator to pass me the next piece of the boom pole and uh, hope that he's got a steady hand on that uh, control uh, as he eases that uh, piece to me. Um, many floors off the ground. I've um, done that. I've never went to war other than the military, but I've been in a gunfight out on the hunting in the woods. Now, I don't mean just uh, somebody took a shot at me. It, they were shooting for the real thing. And um, so I've, I've been in, around in this world in my 74 years. I've done ministry. Um, but it's not been ministry that most people do. It's been the ministry most people would not be about to do. But thank God, God calls some people to do it. I've been into the inner cities where a lot of people, uh, <laughs> I'll just be plain, uh, not being racist, but a lot of white men, men would not go. Uh, and I've gone by myself oftentimes. I've worked with um, groups there. That many times I was the only white person there. Um, that's okay. I, you know, we were like family. Um, I've, uh, but they were bad neighborhoods I had to get into. Um, I've not only ministered in prison and pulled no punches with my message. I told them just how it was. I've also worked 11 years when the economy got bad. At the age of 55, I think 54, 55 years old, I think it was, I went to work in a maximum security prison there in North Carolina. They call them close custody, but federal calls them maximum security. Um, I've fought hand-to-hand -hand with murderers, all kinds of people, like gang members. I've looked them in the eye and I've stared them down at times. Times we've had to get physical. So don't think I've not been around. I've even got a daughter that just <laughs> was a successful bull rider for a while until she got injured. So, you know, I've been around. I'm not here. Some people thought it was crazy to come at 70 years old to sell everything, my wife and I. And thank God for a, a good wife, but um, we sold everything we had, came to Romania. Um, it's not somebody, you, you, you know, people think that we didn't have a clue what we were doing, that we just didn't know any better. Well, you can think what you want to. We did what we knew we were being called to do, and we're still here doing what God called us to do. And we're here working in places today that a lot of people would not go. I've had pastors and preachers. I've seen a pastor came in one time, and... Uh, uh, he was good shape, much younger than me, uh, made a, a purpose of staying in good shape, worked out, hiked, biked, and um, took him out to one of the places where I do ministry at, and I'm not the only one that does ministry out there. Others do, too. Um, but, um, no, he wouldn't walk through it with me. He said, God may have called you here, but he didn't call me. So, uh, you know, don't uh, look down on me and act like I don't know what I'm doing or that I'm just this innocent, 
clueless individual. Uh, you know, and I'm not talking to anybody in particular. This this has just been yeah, almost uh, <laughs> all over the place. It's not been one person. It, it's and I'm not saying it's everybody because thank God some people have been very much behind us and they know where we've been. They know the work I've done before, places I've been and that that I've done. Uh, and God's had me. Uh, and I told God when he called me that, um, you know, he opened the door. I'd go where pe other people wouldn't go. That's what he wanted out, out of me. And that's what I've been doing for many, many years. So I've worked in the prisons, like I said, side by side. I've been in the day rooms by myself with almost 50 other prisoners, 50 hardened criminals. I've been out on the yard just me and one other officer at the time. So um, out on the yard as a sergeant overseeing all the yards. Um, but I've been on the yard with one other officer, maybe 200 inmates, with a can of pepper spray to <laughs> hopefully take care of it. Thank God it works sometimes, but and most times it always did for me, if you got one or two people. But um, anyway, that's where I've been. Thank God. The Bible says in Jeremiah 24, 7. It says, not, um, excuse me, let me back up. 17. Jeremiah 17. A lot of you are familiar with this. Jeremiah 17. And I, as I was standing here talking, I was fidgeting around with my pen, and I pulled it out of my place, so... I have to go look for it. Okay. Um, God says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. Now, some translations, and, and if you go look the meanings of some of these words, that's what the depth of them. Uh, some go so far as say that the heart is so far gone, it's it's helpless. It's uh, it's without remedy. It's it can't be fixed. There has to be a new heart, a heart transplant. Heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Now I talked about me at one time. That talks about you. If you've never asked God to do that for you and give you that new heart, or you don't, you know, you don't necessarily have to make that request. But when you're born again. When you accept him as Savior and Lord, then that's what happens. And he says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to the ver every man, according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. As the partridge sitteth on the eggs and hatcheth them not, so he that gathereth riches not by right shall leave them in the midst of his days, and at his end shall be a fool. Um, that's the man that continues on with the heart that we were born with. People say, well, this is the way I, God made me. Uh, not exactly. God created you. But your heart you inherited from Adam. Now, that sinful, wicked heart led us in the Garden of Eden, so we're passed down from him, and he's passed his genes in that respect on down to us. Um, but you don't have to stay there. Uh, you, you can use that excuse if you want to, but God said, I've got a remedy, and he did. Before the foundation of the world, he determined to send his son to earth. See, when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, it did, take, it did not take God by surprise. My goodness, anybody should know that. He already had a plan in place because he knew it was going to happen, but he did it anyway. He created us anyway. And so, as time went by, man kept that wicked heart. So wicked again, it uh, got to place. He had to destroy the earth. All but eight beings on, uh, got on the ark uh, that were saved. The eight that got on were saved. The rest were wiped out because of the wickedness. I mean wickedness. We, you think you know wickedness. I don't know. I think any of us probably seen anything like that day, but we're, we're here long enough. Some of you will um, if the Antichrist shows up because God says there's never been a day like that. 
But the good news is, over in the same prophet prophesied this, God's word. Jeremiah 24, 7 says, And I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. For they shall return unto me with their whole heart. Now, this was a promise made to Israel. But you know, the Bible says we as Gentiles have been grafted in. And so this is a promise that also came to us when Jesus Christ died on the cross, paid the price. Now, people can say all kind of wicked stuff like, well, how could God do that to his own son? Listen, Jesus Christ was not a baby when he went to the cross. Uh, he'd been, <laughs> matter of fact, he, he'd been in eternity past uh, forever before he came to this earth as a babe. But he was all man when he went to the cross. And um, some say he's all man and he's all God. And, hey, I don't understand that, but, hey, that fits. But he was not some clueless person. Um, and so so I guess he's went through the same thing I have in a certain way. <laughs> People thought he was clueless too, um, uh, going to the cross like that. Some people today still think he was. How could he do that? Well, he did it because he loved you and me. He did it because of the joy that was set before him, the Bible says. Not the joy of the cross and that torturous death that no man has ever faced before. And you can say, well, other people died on the cross before. Well, sure they have. They didn't have the weight of the sin of the whole world weighing on their shoulders, though, and the guilt, because that's what he took upon himself. Even though he was sinless, that's the only way he could take it on was to be the sinless one because that no one else could take that weight and carry it and do him good with it. But that's what Jesus did. So it wasn't like God took his son and said, here, this, I'm going to make you do this. No. Jesus Christ was all for it. Now, he did. He knew how bad it was going to be. He did ask if there's some other way out that, you know, if God, if the Father would do it. But as I said, this was planned from the foundation of the world. Now, how do you think God's going to handle it when you stand before him and say, well, I didn't like that way? That's just not who I am. That's not who I was. I, you know, I believe this, I blah, blah, blah. God's not going to accept that. You might as well get over that. God didn't say, he's not going to say, oh, okay, I'll let you, you know, you had good intentions. No. You had bad intentions. You had the intention of going your own way and rejecting the way of God that God had established, as I said before, before the foundation of the world was set. So you can go ahead your own way if you want to. This not going to get you anywhere. Oh, it might get you somewhere for a little while. Satan gives out his rewards. He gives out little pieces of candy down here to keep you on the hook, keep you following after him. Plays his little pied piper pipe, in a sense. And you just follow right along. But one of these days, you'll have to face Jesus Christ. You'll have to stand before him. So, as I said, I've... I'm not new on the block. I think I know a little bit about what's going on. I put up with, um, as a sergeant in the correctional work in the prisons. Oh, I never do that again, Sarge. I, I'm sorry. I just, you know, just give me this, do this for me. Just let me off this time. Blah, blah, blah. I've been there. But yet, I don't know. People seem to think I'm just this goody, two shoes. It's just, oh, I'm going to give in to everything. Now, be very blunt with you. I do give in to things sometimes. But there's a difference between doing something out of conviction because Jesus Christ has put it on my heart. I'm not going to hold back. If God says give somebody something, God says do something, I'm going to do it. But until he does, I'm going to be very careful, and I will. So if I give to someone, that's between me and God. If you want to hold on to your 
stingy money, um, <laughs> what little you got, or, or the lot you've got. That's your, between you and God. But I'll do as I feel led to do. And I won't do what God seems to be telling me that I shouldn't do. I'm not going to cave in to the sentiments. Let's put it that way. I mean, you know, 11 years in the prison system. You think I haven't faced it? You think I haven't been played and tried to be played? Yeah, all the time. I've been there. I didn't just show up yesterday. So I just kind of want to let you, you know, some of you know who I am. Um, some of you holier than thou is going to say, well, you didn't have to do that. God will lift you up. You don't have to do that. Well, I guess so, you know. Uh, I don't know what happened to the Apostle Paul when he talked about things like that, where he had been and what God had brought him through. But God did bring me through all that and has brought me through all that. And God will be the one that lifts me up. This is not going to lift me up anywhere. It's not about lifting me up. Um but like I say, it, gets, it's, it wears on you a little while after a while when everybody seems to think that you're, um, you, you just showed up yesterday. Um, and so I just kind of want to set the record straight. I want to assure my friends and those that have just got to know me, those that may I run into tomorrow that uh, <laughs> don't even know me yet, um, where I've been, where I'm at, where I am now. Thank God I don't, I'm not where I used to be. Um, thank God I'm not there. But, as I said, I left that heartbreak hotel, and I've got a new place now. Now, the desire of my heart, it's changed because God gave me a new one. And here it is. Hold on. And by the way, I've never rodeoed, but uh, I've ridden horses. I've been on one when it's bucked and run and stopped, trying to throw me over its head, and then the st <laughs> a stirrup broke on me, and I ended up splat on the ground. Um, I've been kicked with both hind feet before. You might say, well, I now know what's wrong with you. <laughs> okay. No, it didn't hit my head. It hit me in the chest and in the shoulder. Uh, one in one in hoof in the chest and one in the shoulder. Um, I don't think we'll put my capo here. Um, I've also been on them and had them rare straight up in the air, and I've stayed right with them. So... Don't think I'm just some pitiful Christian that come along and don't know what's going on. I've been in both worlds. I've said lately too. Uh, let me let me just say this to those of you who uh, maybe get intimidated sometimes by the people that want to pull up science and pull up things, uh, literature and different arguments against God. If you're a child of God, you're the only one that's got real insight. Stop and think about it. You've lived in both worlds. You've been on that end without God. And now you're on the one with God, and you know God. The, this guy that, or this person that's arguing with you, he's only, been, he's only seen one side. That's all he knows. He doesn't have a clue what you're talking about. So you've got the advantage over him in that respect. And so, uh, so I have with uh, those who want to argue with me over, you know, the reality of Christ. You're not going to change my mind. I've been there. I've been where you are, and I've been where I am now. And I'm, I'm not going back. But this is my desire for every one of you that do not know Him. I walk by. 
Brother to my Buddha Looked inside and saw his bones Traveled on to see Muhammad Here wrapped up in his grave clothes Then I journeyed to the garden Where old Joseph left him lay But the precious lamb God's only been forgotten, be gone, excuse me. He was no longer in the grave. If you knew him like I know him, you would know that he's alive. If you felt him like I feel him, resurrect. Deep inside, you know that he is living, is dying. If you're wandering in the darkness, come and step into the light. Nail scarred hand, reach out to help you, to pull you safe. And I too have stood where you stand. Could I trust in things I see? Just one step in his direction, then in love ran to me. If you knew him like I know. So, I guess uh, for some, maybe a little thrown off because I'm usually soft-spoken. I can raise my voice when I need to. <laughs> so maybe you've seen that too. Uh, but um, I know what I'm doing. I appreciate all advice. I do. I you know I'm not saying I don't need advice. I'm not saying. You can't tell me something that I may need to know. Uh, all of that's good. But um, just understand that I'm not some gullible guy that's just come along that's never seen the world, don't have a clue what's going on. I do. And uh, that goes both ways. Like I say, for those that maybe don't know me that well and for those that... Um, in the future that um, may think that I'm a pushover for some reason. Um, I'm, the, I'm neither one. I'm, I can be very compassionate, and I'll try to be. I'll try to be as much like Jesus Christ as I can. As a matter of fact, the Bible says I'm supposed to be molded into his image, and he's still working on me, heading in that direction. But at the same time, that does not mean that I have to give in to everybody that tries to put that on me. Oh, believe me, I had inmates. I had prisoners. These prisoners said, well, you're supposed to be a Christian. Yeah, I heard that a lot. Uh, you should do this. You should do that. Um, i tell you what I should do as a Christian. That's tell, do what I'm doing right now. Tell other people about Jesus Christ. Tell some beggar, some starving beggar, where he can find bread. 
in Jesus Christ. That's the only place you can find it, the living waters, the living bread. It's in Jesus Christ. Dale Little here, Rescue America Ministries.